Hello everyone and welcome back to BrickCats. Today I am reviewing the striking black and orange T-70 X-Wing Starfighter designed by Jarek and distributed by BrickVault. As always, subscribing or liking this review is a great way to support my channel and a huge thank you to helping me for helping me pass 500 subscribers on YouTube and 400 on Instagram. Your support means more great mock reviews in the future. The T-70 was the mainstay of the New Republic and later the Resistance's Starfighter Corps in the sequel era. It improved on the classic T-65B in nearly every way, and despite what you might think of the sequel trilogy movies, I really do appreciate how the design of the T-70 is clearly an advanced iteration of the classic T-65B, much like how we see a lot of inspiration from the T-65B in the ARC-170 instead of going in the other direction. I'm going to try something a little new going forward, and that is offering a summary of the cost of the model early in the review, as feedback from many of my viewers indicates that pricing is often, often the determining factor in deciding whether to build a mock or not. I'm very happy to report that the black version is very economical, and there are no substitutions that make a huge difference in the price. In early March 2022, BrickLink's algorithm was returning 4 stores and only $139 before shipping and tax. That's about $164 after shipping and tax, without any substitutions or removals. The gray version was slightly more expensive. Without substitutions, I got 6 stores and $169 before shipping and tax, or about $205 after shipping and tax. I was able to get both of them slightly lower than that, so for the details, either stick around or jump to the parts section. And please let me know if you find this pricing summary up front helpful or not. In my reviews, I offer my opinions on aesthetics and model features, parts issues you might want to look out for, the build experience, the model's integrity, and I close out with my overall impressions and pricing information in the conclusion. If you're watching this review, I assume that you've bought the instructions or are interested in buying them, and I also assume a basic level of familiarity with BrickLink's ordering system and LEGO nomenclature. Of course, I only use genuine LEGO bricks, and I always purchase the instructions. Lastly, I create these reviews for my own personal enjoyment, and in the hopes that my advice will make your experience more enjoyable and or less expensive. The T-70 measures approximately 15 inches long by 13 and a half inches wide and 8 inches tall on the stand, which is about 38 centimeters by 33 and a half centimeters by 20.3 centimeters. And without the stand and the S-foils open, the fiber alone is 4 inches or 10 centimeters tall. The T-70 is actually shorter than the T-65B in Canon by about a meter, and narrower by about half a meter depending on your source. However, this T-70 is about exactly the same length as Jurag's original T-65B, if not slightly longer, and it's also slightly wider. So it's a little out of scale in that respect, but that's only going to matter to the minifigure scale nitpickers. Starting at the front, I'm a big fan of the smooth transition between the nose and the fuselage, fuselage here, even though there is the slightest relief to the sensor cone at the, at the front in Canon. I think that'd be pretty difficult to achieve with LEGO and it tapers down to a nice point at the tip here. There is a small gap you can see between the top and bottom curved slopes, and this is a little bit unfortunate, but it also is on purpose. There is an explicit instruction uh, to leave this gap. And I do kind of wonder if the new 6x2 wedge, this is a 4x2 wedge here, would cover this gap but still maintain the profile, and unfortunately my BrickLink order did not arrive in time to test that out, but I will test it out and post pictures on my Instagram. The nose slopes very nicely back to the cockpit, which has some light bluish gray pieces behind and, either, and to either side to extend it backwards as the T-70's cockpit in Canon is a little bit larger than the T-65's. Of course, any X-Wing using the official LEGO piece is going to be inherently inaccurate, just because LEGO shaping isn't accurate. This should actually taper from wide up here at the top to narrow down at the front, so basically LEGO has it completely backwards. But this is a good s solution for it, and it still maintains the trans-clear canopy look that Jurak was going for. The cockpit hinges just behind where the official LEGO cockpit hinges. And the cockpit does have room for a minifigure. 
And inside there's some controls, some screens, and a nice reddish brown seat. I did have some issues with Poe's helmet hitting the top of the cockpit. Uh, you can see maybe that this is not quite closed all the way, but um, the way I get around this is that you can kind of adjust this so that these side assemblies, which uh, kind of pivot right about here, can be rotated to sit flush with the edge of the canopy there. The astromech droid sits between the four studs you can see in the astromech well. And unfortunately this doesn't seem to fit the traditional astromech droid, but you could remove the legs and um, maybe put a 2x2 round brick and then place the head on there if you really want. I actually didn't look up if a traditional R2 unit could fit in a Kamen T-70. Um, that would be interesting to know. Moving to the back of the fuselage, there's some nice greaveling, and the back really has a nice curve. You can kind of see these uh, 10 by one or maybe it's 12 by one I can't remember. Uh, but these long curved slope pieces taper nicely back towards the back, and this 2x2, or sorry, 2x4 tile is actually not fully stubbed in. It's, it's stubbed um, about halfway on the front and back, and so that's a nice little angle there. Uh, not gonna lie, this did feel a little bit weird, but it is solid, and there's it's not going anywhere. The engine shaping looks really good with these 3x3x1 round corner bricks used to nice effect for the intakes, and the larger profile in the front, you can see here, tapering towards the rear and transitioning smoothly into the exhaust vents here. There is a small gap you can see between the engines and the fuselage, and that's unfortunately my probably my least favorite par part about this model. But they're mostly not visible from what I'll call normal viewing angles, so if you're looking at this in three-quarter, or head-on, or, you know, whatever way, they're not too noticeable. And with the S-foils open, you can't see that gap as much, or at all, from the uh, maybe a little bit from the top-down view, but they're very much smaller. Moving to the rear of the fighter, I really like these grooving sections at the back of the engine, and it's a little bit difficult to see because it's all black, but it does have a pretty nice shape with this 1x2 curved slope. It's probably, what, 2L wide at the top here, and then transitions uh, nicely down to 3 at the bottom here. So that looks really good. The wings are extremely well done, in my opinion. And as you probably noticed earlier, if I actuate the S-foils, they do have the correct split right in the middle of the wing. And from front on, I think these go a little bit wider. There we go. S-foil shaping is pretty much perfect. And probably my favorite part about this model, if I'm picking small things to, uh, again, be disproportionately excited for, I re was really happy to see these curved slow pieces here and here. Uh, it adds a little bit of flare from the wings to the cannon. And these are screen accurate as well, so very nice job with that. The cannons themselves are simple constructions with these minifigure candlesticks, this antenna piece, and some Technic connectors. I personally did not mind the hose construction of the older versions of the X-Wing, and I think black hoses here would be more visually accurate as, um, particularly with the candlesticks, this is supposed to be thinner than it actually is here. But the trade-off for stability and cost definitely works for me. Jarek is using these um, Ninjago size Psy pieces, I hope I pronounced that right, for the tip of the cannon and the flash suppressors, and I was pleasantly surprised how well these scale, even if the shape is not quite right. And it still annoys me to no end that LEGO produces an X-Wing every one and a half or two years, but they still haven't given us a piece that looks really good as the flash suppressor there. There is a bit of play in the wings, and this is pretty common, and you've seen me actuate the S-foils a couple times, but I haven't shown you the mechanism. The redesigned S-foil mechanism is actuated by this, well this is an octagonal modified plate, 
but you just turn this and the gear mechanism inside opens and closes the wings. So looking at this head-on, you can see the wings are just two plates thick, and that's a product of it splitting it in the middle. There is a little bit of play in the wings. If I jiggle it, you can kind of feel the wings maybe a little bit loose. And also this front one here does droop a little bit, as you can see. It doesn't quite line up with the one behind it, but this is also pretty common. Um, this one is really good. This is perfectly aligned, if I can, as far as I can tell. Very importantly, the S-Whale mechanism is um, operable while the fighter is on the stand too, so that's really nice. And speaking of the stand, it's a pretty simple affair. Put this down for a second. It holds the T-70 at a nice upwards angle, and the shift is also pretty easy to remove by tilting it forward as the two slopes right here on this slope connect uh, to this Technic piece here. And this is also the exact same stand that Jarek has used for the TIE Fighter revisions, as well as the T-65 revision. The underside of the fighter is nice and smooth, and landing gear is included. You have the front landing pad here, and the two rear ones right here. I was also very impressed to see that uh, Jarek has the location of the rear landing studs correct. Unlike the T-65, they do not come from the... there's no well in this bottom engine here, and they are slightly off to the side. You can kind of see that in the beginning of The Force Awakens. And they're actually so well integrated that it always takes me a minute to actually see where they are so I can pull them out. So it lines up really nicely with this inverted slope here, and it's just very seamless. You will notice that the underside of the wings are anti-studs, which is in contrast to the T-65. Of course, this is obviously a consequence of having the wings split in the center and maintaining that two-plate thickness, so I think this is an acceptable trade-off. So here's the fighter on its stand with the S-foils closed, and like I said, you can operate the S-foils on the stand and open it up. So overall, this looks great. The black and orange color scheme really stands out. The gray one also looks very good, even though I didn't build that one. But uh, very well done on pretty much everything, as we would expect from Jarek at this point. The black version you see here is specified at 222 elements and 1,267 pieces, while the gray version has 236 elements and 1,252 pieces. Both versions include the stand as part of the parts list, and I will caveat this section by saying that while I believe most of the recommendations in the parts section for the black model will also apply to the gray version, I have not built that one, so you should confirm for yourself that these substitutions will work. And up front, a lot of the substitutions have to do with the S-Foil mechanism, which you can't really see, so I'm pretty sure they're going to work. Overall, I was very impressed with the part selection from a cost and availability standpoint without any substitutions. In general, you want to maintain the specified colors, especially since there aren't any significant cost savings by going with a different color in nearly every case. The parts list and instructions do specify the booster that Poe uses on his fighter at the beginning of Black. Um, sorry, at the beginning of the Last Jedi, and I did elect not to build that. So if you don't want to build that either, here are the elements you can exclude. For this particular model, I also did not buy parts from the stand since I have a couple of the new stands already from Jarex Tie Fighters. If you don't have the stand, or if you don't have a stand to spare already, I do recommend building it, but here are the parts if you want to exclude those as well. The cockpit windscreen specified for the black version is the newer one that comes in set 75301 and has light bluish gray printing, and that's part 21849PB05. This is the least expensive of the three modern X-Wing windscreens, 
but the blue and gray version specifies a the blue and gray version of the T70 specifies a more expensive version of the windscreen with the rivet pattern, and that's the one found on the official black and orange X-wing, and that is part 21849 PB01. This windscreen also came on set 75149, which is the blue and gray uh, official resistance X-wing. So if you're building the gray version, I do recommend switching the specified windscreen for the light bluish gray printed version 21849PB05. It'll save you a couple bucks. The Technic Worm screw part 4716 is specified in black, but any color will work as they are completely hidden inside the gear mechanism. Along with the Technic Gear 12 tooth bevel part 6589, which is already very common in the specified tan, but any color will work here. The four Technic Brick 1x4 with holes, part 3701, are nearly completely hidden, and any dark neutral color will work fine here. Black or light bluish gray, I think I use black, are probably the most common options, but even reddish brown or the old light gray will work as well. You can't see them because they're black. Actually, you probably should have used a bright color to show you how much you can't see them, but they're just hidden inside uh, behind this little sub-assembly right here. The three Technic Axle 3L, part 4519, are specified in black. And black is pretty uncommon, while light bluish gray is very common. And light bluish gray works just fine. You can see one of the 3L axles right here, while you can see part of another one right here. And the other one is actually hidden inside these Technic pieces by these tiles. So, in my opinion, it makes very little difference if they're black or light bluish gray, so I think you should just go with the one that you have, if applicable, or just buy the cheaper one. The 5L axle you can also substitute for light bluish gray. In this particular stand, I did not have a black one already because I used it, so the 5L axle goes right here. And this is more for strength reinforcement on the stand, so you could probably even leave it out if you really wanted to. Finally, eight of the 18 Technic Pin 1 half, part 4274, are specified in light bluish gray, and eight of them go on the stand, and as you can see, they're completely hidden, so there's four on each side here. Two of the remaining 10 are not visible and form part of the nose assembly, right about here. And the last eight are only barely visible in the cannon assemblies, and even then, they're only visible if you rotate this Technic Connector 2L, so the slob is showing, so you can just barely see the blue Technic pin in there. I don't particularly care about that. If you, if that will bother you, then by all means, eight of them need to be light bluish gray Technic pin one halves. This is usually where I give my recommendation of pieces that you can get from Pick a Brick or Bricks and Pieces less expensively than Bricklink. But there was only one element that was significantly cheaper in the quantities required, and that was the brick brown corner 3x3x1 three three without studs part 65617 in light bluish gray, which seems to run about $1 on brick length, but it was only $0.36 cents directly from LEGO. However, usually the cost savings ordering directly from LEGO comes by saving on shipping from cutting down the number of BrickLink stores, and I'm truly not seeing enough pieces that are clearly better to order from LEGO to recommend placing a big Bricks and Pieces order. So overall, very economical parts usage, and not many substitutions or alternatives to recommend as a result of that. The instructions contain 439 steps, which includes the stand and the booster engine if you choose to build them. Each part or subassembly you add in a given step is outlined in red, and this is perfectly fine in this mostly black build. Black builds, at least for me, tend to be a lot more time consuming than other colors, simply because it's really difficult for me to see the part I am looking for in a sea of other black parts. So I definitely recommend sorting some pieces ahead of time, and this is one of the few builds where I took some extra time to do this. All in all, the build took me about 6 hours, going at my pretty normal pace over a couple of days. There were only some very minor issues I found in the instructions, and this is specific to the black one. First, in step 172, I think this is a holdover from the gray version where it says, note the orientation of the blue strip. 
and obviously this is supposed to be the orange strip in this model. And this refers to the piece that forms the stripe right in the middle of the wings there. And this step even isn't really particularly helpful anyway because you can't see the orange stripe as shown in the directions. So what you're really looking for is the orientation of the 1x2 panel in relation to the engine housing. In step 321 with these assemblies underneath the tiles on the bottom of the ship right under the cockpit, it's mirrored on this side but I only took off the tiles to show you. I have a lot of trouble getting this connection to work on this last, the rearmost brick modified one by one with studs on opposite sides to stud into the hinge plate that's right above it. I think this is one of those cases where you just have to make some really small adjustments until it all miraculously clicks together, so maybe I had something a little bit off to begin with. But something to look out for just if I'm talking about the build itself, this took a little bit of patience and I had to leave this for a couple minutes and come back to it after it wasn't working out for me for a while. Steps 325 to 328 are the engine intakes, and there's no 4x indicator, although it's all on one page so it's not too big of a deal. And other than those three small issues, I didn't have any problems with the build. There's a number of helpful explanations for the less obvious connections, and there's no major issues with the viewing angle or the sequence in which you build the sub-assemblies. Since this model is so smooth, I was not expecting it to be as durable as it is. Starting with the parts you'd expect to be weak, these cannon assemblies are very sturdy, as they're mostly, I guess, technic-based, and then bar connections throughout. The ship is very sturdy in the place you would expect to grab onto it, or tend to grab onto it. That sloped 2x4 tile is where you put your thumb, and then your fingers grab underneath here, and this is all very solid. The S-foil mechanism is very easy to use, and that worm, those worm gears only provide a slight bit of resistance to when you turn the gear. And you should note that th these S-foils are actually pretty difficult to open and close without turning that wheel at the bottom. Uh, I don't want to do it, but I, I definitely do not recommend just pulling these wings apart like you could on the original T-65. As the wing connections, while they're pretty stable, there's only essentially one stud of width uh, connecting here, uh, as well as on the opposite side, so sometimes this wing can just pop off if you grab it like that. And another improvement over the old T-65 I noticed is that when you jiggle this from side to side, the wings remained locked in place. So this will be a little tough to see unless I do a comparison. So I will hold this here and grab one of the original T-65s to try and show you. So with the S-foils closed, if I shake this one, I guess it's probably easiest just to try and listen, but you don't really hear any shuddering, and maybe you can't see the wings. The wings are moving in unison with my rocking motion here. Whereas on the original T-65, you can kind of see the fuselage flopping around while the wings are not in sync. So that does not happen on the new model. It's a very nice improvement there. The landing gear I showed you earlier does not lock in place, but it's surprisingly sturdy as these two unfold in opposite directions. So you can generally set this on a smooth surface and push it without worrying too much about the whole thing collapsing. And by extension, any surface you put this on, it's not going to collapse with a casual bump or anything like that. Another thing to note that I liked was that the front landing skid folds into the cockpit a lot further than the original T-65 did, so overall the hull looks a lot smoother on the bottom. And that is again in pretty direct contrast to the original. 
can see the front landing skid is just a little bit below the, the bottom line of the fuselage there. The engines are now held in place with bar connections, so anyone who owns the original X-Wing knows that if you tried to basically touch those rear engine exhaust ports that uh, they would pop off, but these are secured by bars now, so they're very strong. And the underside of the fuselage is also very strong as well. These tiles here are probably the weak points, you might have seen one pop off earlier, but in general everything is very solid here. And the only pieces I find coming off with any real frequency are these tiles at the back because they're held on with just a lone hollow stud connection. So if these pop off, you can see that's what it clips onto. Thankfully these are very easy to get back on. And even then, even while you're grabbing it like this, I don't find myself bumping these too much. And of course, when the fighter is on the stand, the stubby connection is very strong. I have zero concerns about this going anywhere. And anything but the most uh, purposeful bump is going to be fine. So overall, this model gets very high marks for strength and structural integrity. You all know by now that I am a huge sucker for the X-Wing, and X-Wing models are consistently my favorites to build and feature on my channel. Jurex T70 is certainly no exception, and I was thrilled to see this on Jurex Instagram while it was a work in progress. And what's even better about the black version at least is the reasonably low cost of the model. I alluded to it in the beginning, but in early March 2022 I was getting just 4 stores and $139 before shipping and tax, or about $164 after shipping and tax, without any substitutions or removals. So that $139 before shipping and tax includes the stand and the booster engine. If you remove the stand and booster, I got it down to 4 stores and $122 before shipping and tax, or $146 after shipping and tax. The gray version was slightly more expensive. Without substitutions, I got 6 stores and $169 before shipping and tax, or about $205 after shipping and tax. And by switching out the expensive windscreen for the cheaper one and excluding the stand, the total cost didn't go down by much, but I did reduce the store count by one, for a total of 5 stores and $166 before shipping and tax, or $196 after shipping and tax. Jerax T70 is a great looking model, and the low cost, at least for the black and orange version, makes this an easy one to give my highest recommendation. The build is fun, there's really interesting techniques, and for a mock it's very sturdy. For those of the built the original T65 X-Wing, you will be able to notice many improvements Jurek has made to the key structural assemblies in this model, which was a significant part of the fun, at least for me. The instructions for the T70 cost $16.99 from BrickVault, and there will be a link to BrickVault's website in the description, along with a link to Jurek's Flickr page. Of course, you get the instructions and parts list for both the black and the gray variations. Thanks as always for watching my review of the Jurak Brick Vault T70 X-Wing. If you built this model you have something to share that I left out, or have a question about something I didn't cover, please leave them below in the comments. Remember to leave the video a like, subscribe to the channel, or follow, follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I hope to see you back next time.